Hey there guys, it's Amit, you're watching Dev Dreamer, and welcome to lesson 18 in JavaScript. In this lesson, we're going to learn all about comparison operators. If you enjoy the content, don't forget to like and subscribe down below and choose all notifications by clicking the bell so you never miss an update. Okay, so welcome back to lesson number 18. Let's learn all about comparison operators. So in the last few lessons then, we've learned about the number data type and the string data type. In the next few lessons, we're going to be understanding all about the Boolean data type. And we're going to do this by looking at comparison and logical operators. And of course, in this lesson, we're going to be learning about comparison operators. So in programming, we'll very often come across a situation where we need to compare values. And as the name implies, comparison operators are used to compare two different values. Now JavaScript has several ways to do this. The first thing to know is that all comparison operators return a boolean value. Remember a boolean can either be true or false. And so when we compare two values, what we're looking to see is whether the outcome is true or false. Now there are three main types of comparison operators. We've got relational, abstract or loose equality, and then finally we've got strict equality. Relational operators compare values in relation to one another. Loose equality operators check to see if the two values are the same. And then strict equality operators check to see if the two values are the same and have the same data type. And of course, we're going to be looking at each of these in detail throughout this lesson. In this lesson, we're going to be focusing on comparing numbers um, because that's what you'll be doing for the vast majority of time when you're programming. But we will take a brief look at comparing strings later on in the lesson as well. OK, so let's start then. The first comparison operator we want to learn is the more than operator. And this is used to check whether a value is more than another value. Let's see how it works. OK, so first of all, then let's go ahead and create a variable. So let's just say let x be assigned the value of 7. And we're going to be using this x variable here to compare against other values. So first of all, then let's look at more than. Let's go ahead and put a comment in for our more than example. So it's going to be the more than sign. And then let's put a text in there that says more than. And we're going to be console logging this. OK, so the way that this works then is we say x space and then the more than symbol and then space and then another value that we want to compare it against. So let's go ahead and say the number 10. So what this basically is saying is, is 7 more than the number 10? And of course, you know that that's not true. So the console is going to return false because 7 is not more than the number 10. OK, if we said is X more than the number 6, then of course, this is going to be true because the number 7 is more than the number 6. So that's how we use the more than operator. Now we can also check to see whether a value is more than or equal to another value. So down here, let's just go ahead and just copy this. Let's change this to the more than or equal to symbol and change this to more than or equal to. And the way that this works then works in pretty much the same way. So we start with the first value. So we're going to say X again, which is number seven space and then more than or equal to another value. So let's try 10 again. Let's see what we get. OK, so the console returns false because the number seven is not more than or equal to the number 10 It's actually less. If we said the number seven, so is X, which is seven, more than or equal to the number seven. Let's save this and the console returns true. Now, why do you think this is? Let's think about this. Is X, which is the number seven, more than the number seven? Well, no, that's false. X is not more than the number seven. They are both equal. However, X is equal to the number seven. And that's another thing that we're checking for here is the first value equal to the second value. And that is true. That's why the console returns true. So the first statement returns false because X is not more than or equal to 10. And the second statement returns true because whilst X is not more than seven, it is equal to seven. There's also the less than versions of these. So let's go ahead and let's just duplicate this whole thing here. Okay, and just put a space in between here. Let's change this to less than. And of course, the less than symbol is going to be this one right here. We're going to change this to less than or equal to. And let's see how they work. Let's just get rid of this and get rid of this as well. So these work in pretty much the same way. Let's say X space less than the number 10. Let's save and the console returns true because it's true. The number seven is less than the number 10. For less than or equal to, we can say is X less than or equal to the number 10. This, of course, is going to return true. So let's put a space in there as well. It's going to return true because the number seven is less than number 10. And let's just do the same one we did for the more than or equal to as well. So we say is X less than or equal to the number seven. Let's save. And the console returns true because whilst X, which is the number seven, is not less than seven, it is equal to seven. And so this returns true. Let's just for 
continuity go ahead and add this in as well so let's say is x less than the number six let's save this and of course the console returns false because seven is not less than the number six okay so these four then are known as relational comparison operators let's then look at the loose and strict operators as well so once again we are comparing two values to see if they return either true or false so down here the first one we're going to look at is equal to let's do a console.log okay so how does this work well we can check to see if two values are equal by using the double equal symbol Remember, the equal sign on its own is the assignment operator in JavaScript. So up here, when we assigned the number seven to the variable x, we used this, what we know as an equal symbol, but in JavaScript, this is the assignment operator. So to check equality then, we're gonna say, is x equal to, remember we're using the double equals there, the number seven. Let's save this and let's see what we get. The console of course returns true because x, which is the number seven, is equal to the number seven. If we said is x equal to the number 6, this of course will return false because the number 7 is not equal to the number 6. Now we can also check to see if a value is not equal to another value. Just give ourselves some space. Okay, and the way that we do that is we say the exclamation mark and then the equal symbol. So in here, let's check to see if x is not equal to the number 7. What do you think we're going to get in the console? Let's save it. And of course we get false because the number seven is equal to the number seven. Okay, so these two then, equal to and not equal to, are known as abstract or loose equality operators. Let's also put the word not in here so we're not confused. So that's not equal to. So for these examples, I'm gonna go ahead and create another variable called y, and we're gonna set this equal to the number seven, but the number seven as a string, and you'll see why in just a second. And the first one we're gonna look at is the strict equality operator. The strict equality operator differs from the normal equality operator, which is this one over here, in that the strict equality operator will check for not only the same value, but also the same data type. So here, let's say x space, and the way that we write this is three equal symbols, and then let's say the number seven. Let's save this, and the console returns true, because x, which is our variable for the number seven up here, is equal to the number seven in terms of its value and its data type. However, if we said is x, let's get rid of this, if we said is x equal to strict equality to the variable y, which is the number seven, but the number seven is a string, let's save this. And now the console returns false, because whilst it's true that x, which is seven, is equal to y, which is also seven, as to their value, they're not equal as to their data type. This is a number, and this is a string, okay? x is a number, and y is a string, so the console returns false. So the strict equality operator then not only checks to see if the values are the same, but also if they have the same data type. So let's go ahead and put our comment in over here. Okay, the final strict comparison operator we're going to look at is the strict not equal to operator. So let's say console.log, and we're gonna say is x, and the way that we write this is exclamation mark, and then a double equals. Remember, not equal to was simply exclamation mark with one equal symbol whereas a strict not equal to uses a double equal symbol. So we're going to say x, which is the number seven, is not equal to y. Let's save this, and the console returns true. Let's see why this is. So x, which is the number seven, is not equal to y, which is the string seven. So whilst they have the same value, again, they don't have the same data type. Okay, so these then are known as the strict comparison operators. Let's go ahead and put a comment in for this one. Okay, and with that guys, we've learned all about the JavaScript comparison operators. So we had relational operators, abstract or loose, and then finally, strict operators. Now for all these examples then, we've used numbers. But at the beginning, I did promise that we'll take a brief look at how to compare strings as well. So let's go ahead and do that. So the way that this works and for strings is A has a lower value than B, B has a lower value than C, and so on. So A has the lowest value, and Z has the highest value. So down here then, if we said console.log, and let's check to see if A, capital A, is less than capital Z. Let's go ahead and save this to see what we get. Okay, the console returns true. Remember, A has a smaller value than Z. We can also compare words. Just give ourselves some space here. Let A be assigned the value of time, and let B be assigned the value of timing. And now in the console, Let's check to see if our variable a 
is more than a variable b. The console returns false. And the reason for this is because these variables are compared letter by letter. So they both have the same three letters, t, i, m, but their fourth letters are different. E comes before i, and so it has a lower value. To check this, essentially what we're doing is we're saying is e more than i. And of course we get false again. Okay, so that's all about the comparison operators and how to use them. Remember guys, what we're doing right now is we're learning all about the little building blocks that will all come together to do some really cool things with JavaScript. So to summarize this lesson, comparison operators are used to compare two different values. When we compare two values, what we're looking to see is whether the outcome is true or false. In other words, comparison operators return Boolean values. We saw that there are three main types of comparison operators, relational, abstract, and strict. And finally, we saw that we can also compare strings by letter value. Okay, so let's take a look at your tasks for this lesson. Okay, so we've got four tasks for this lesson. For task number one, I want you to create two variables called a and b. Assign the value 10 to a and 15 to b. Check to see if a is more than b and then go ahead and log the answer to the console. For task number two, use the relevant comparison operator to identify whether a is equal to the string 10. Log your answer to the console again. For task number three, check once again to see if a is equal to 10. This time, making sure to check against the type as well. And then of course, once again, log your answer to the console. And finally, for task number four, if x is equal to five and y is equal to six, then what would the result of the following be? And here we've got x not equal to with the double equals y. Okay, so as always, pause the video, try these out, and when we come back, we'll take a look at the answers. Okay, so how'd you get on then? Let's see. So for task number one then, we need to create two variables. So we're gonna say let a be assigned the value of 10, and let b be assigned the value of 15. And then in the console, we need to check if a is more than b. Let's save this. Of course we get false because the number 10 is not more than the number 15. Okay, for task number two, we need to see if a is equal to the string 10. So we're gonna say console.log, and in here, we're gonna say a double equals. Remember, we check equality with the double equals, and we check and see if a is equal to the string 10. Okay, for task three, we need to check if it's the same value as well as the same data type. So we're gonna say console.log, and what we're looking for here, of course, is the strict equality check. Let's go ahead and save this. And this time, console returns false, because what's they're the same value? Okay, 10 and 10, they are not the same data type. A is a number, and this is a string. And finally, for task number four, if x is equal to the string five and y is equal to the number six, let's go ahead and just create those. So let x be assigned the value of the string five, and let y be assigned the value of the number six. What would the result of the following be? So say const.log x not equal to y. Of course, before we save, I'm oh, sorry, there shouldn't be a space there. Of course, before we save, then let's go ahead and work this out. So if x is the string five and y is the number six, what we've used here is a strict equality operator. So this is going to be true, okay? X is not equal to y, not according to its value, and not even according to its type. So let's go ahead and save. And of course we get true in the console. So guys, well done on completing those tasks. That's it for this lesson. In the next lesson, we're going to be learning all about logical operators. So be sure to tune in. Don't forget to comment, share, like, and subscribe down below and I'll see you on the next one.